Hey guys, Ed Bud here and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got another episode for you of The Running News. Before we get into that though, if you're a new viewer or you haven't done so already, I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications of when my new videos launch. Also, give the video a thumbs up like, it really helps to promote the channel and get it out there. Let's get to it. So first story today on The Running News is around the Global Running Day. It's coming up on my birthday, the 3rd of June. Isn't that strange? What a coincidence that Global Running Day is my birthday. The aim of this challenge is obviously to spread that running bug. You can run anywhere from one mile upwards, and it's basically to challenge somebody else to do that also. You're kind of running for someone that inspires you, so it could be a teacher, your parents, your friend, your cat. On their website, you can tag someone to do the same. I think this is a fantastic initiative really gives people a reason to get out there, stay fit and remain active. That can be quite tough at the moment for some people, especially if you're in a smaller area, you don't have a outside place you can go and run. I think you can do indoor activities as part of it as well. There was a point where I did consider perhaps doing a round the pool table half marathon. I think I'd probably need to buy some new floorboards after I did that though. I think it's a really good initiative as well for people getting into running. The more the merrier, right? There's a one week window where you can participate in Global Running Day. I know that sounds a bit of an odd thing to say, but it's true. It's between the 28th of May and the 7th of June. I think it's important to remember the unifying nature of an event such as this. More than ever, we need to be promoting staying fit and healthy. Being active. Too many games consoles to play and sit and vegetate. Might see if I can get a beast involved in Global Running Day, actually. They're certainly putting on some weight recently. Beast is not a cat that enjoys hot temperatures. I don't think I would be either if I was covered in black fur. You can, of course, run further than one mile if you want to. Please visit the website. I'll place it on the screen and in the description so you can join in on Global Running Day. I think you can have a team as well, so maybe you accumulate more miles or something. I'm not entirely sure how that would work. Obviously, if you did, you'd have to socially distance yourself from each other. I think we're going to be doing that for a while. Story two on the running news today focuses on New Balance. They've been showing their support for Pride Month by launching a whole range of apparel and shoes. New running shoes. You can see why it spiked my interest. So the Pride lineup has three different sets of shoes. Two of them running shoes and one a more casual shoe. So New Balance have released a special version of the Fuel Soul Echolucent in a blue colorway, which I think looks awesome. Rainbow stitching and lace loop. You've got a rainbow coloration on the midsole near the heel. Really cool exposed stitching. I really do like that. Kind of looks like a prototype model. A vented tongue through the full length of the tongue, I think. And I love that reflective heel clip at the back as well. There's a women's variation of the Fuel Cell Echolucent 2, which is a slightly lighter blue, almost cyan, I would suggest. Casual shoe, which has got more of a waffle outsole. So New Balance have very recently joined up with an organization called GLSEN. I don't know if you say it all as one word, Golson, maybe. That organization is running a program called Changing the Game. That program is aiming to make sports safer for those young people who identify with the LGBTQ plus banner. It's really great to see New Balance helping with a really positive cause, opening people's minds and promoting inclusivity, regardless of our gender. I think that's something we can all get on board with. Story three, environmental news. So ASICS recently released a report on their recent environmental sustainability. It shows a really big drop in terms of CO2 emissions. They reported that per pair of shoes in 2019, they managed to reduce the CO2 emissions by, I think it was 27%, 27.9% in fact. So that's the CO2 emissions that it takes to actually create a pair of shoes. They compare it to their base levels in 2015, and it means they've come in underneath the target that they set for 2020. So really positive news. Their chairman and CEO mentions in the report that despite that big drop, they do intend to keep pushing forward and progressing and reduce levels even more. I think by 2030, they're looking to completely move all new products to only use recycled polyester materials. You'll remember that they recently unveiled the Edo Era Tribute Pack, a range of different shoes which use, I think it was 300,000 recycled plastic bottles in their production. Another great initiative that ASICs are looking to implement is to remove all plastic bags from their stores 
by the end of 2020. They're going to replace them with paper ones, obviously, that are very easily recycled, stopping those plastic bags ending up in landfills, taking many, many, many years to completely disintegrate, if ever. Certainly the COVID situation recently has got me thinking more about recycling materials, using up everything I possibly have from stuff. I think it's certainly been a wake-up call to all of us to spend a bit more time looking after this wonderful world that we're very lucky to have. Story four on the running news today is Nike unveiling the Air Zoom Type prototype shoe. This one releases on the 5th of June, and as you can see by the images, is the early prototype, or at least a mock-up of the prototype of the Alpha Fly. Certainly is a casual shoe by all accounts, but does have a healthy nod towards that super speedy marathon shoe. Seems to take its design nods from the early prototype versions of the Alpha Fly. You can see the two Zoom AirPods in the forefoot of the shoe. There's a TPU plate rather than the carbon fiber plate that's within the Alpha Fly. They haven't noted what the foam type that's been used on this shoe is. It does say though that it'll only be available via the Nike sneakers app and a few selected stores. I don't think it's one that's gonna turn up in Sports Direct. Interesting waffle design on the outsole there. As a casual shoe, I'm not too sure how that would work. So clearly this is a more casual shoe that's made as a representation of the prototype Alpha Fly, or even before it became what is the Alpha Fly as we know it. But I'm sure there's many a running shoe geek out there, including me, that wouldn't mind having that as a bit of a collector's piece. It kind of fills in the gaps in that Alpha Fly development cycle between the next percent and the alpha fly the front of the shoe almost has a dress shoe or golf shoe type vibe with the interesting ventilation holes there i think the black pair look a little bit more interesting to me with the little splashes of cyan certainly an interesting oddity i think you'll agree it's kind of launched without any real fanfare either i think we can expect to see a number of different Alpha Fly prototypes or variations on the Alpha Fly. I mean, we've already seen the LeBron 17 with its use of the two AirPods, and I think that there's going to be some off white models as well coming in the near future. They'll probably sell for some ridiculous amount, similar to that trail model that's just been released, the Travis Scott one. I mean, what a weird looking shoe. Apparently, the paint even washes off of the midsole. It's very strange. Can you imagine that? A running shoe where paint washes off. You'd wear it at the start of a trail race, and then by the end, the shoe would look vastly different. Okay, that's pretty much all the running news I've got for you this week, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and thanks for watching through to the very end. Rather than a musical interlude today, I've got a more visual interlude. I've dug out my Jason King box set. Jason King was a character played by the actor Peter Wingard during the 1970s. King is like a fictional writer who writes kind of crime stories and most of the episodes have got a very cookie cutter feel about them. King's normally in a really exotic location somewhere eating strawberries and drinking champagne and he gets badgered by his publisher due to inactivity of the fact he hasn't written any new stuff for his next book. He then goes about writing a ridiculous crime mystery that he sort of solves as well. He's got some quite incredible clothes within this one, as you can imagine, being the early 70s. He always looks incredibly well-dressed. So uh, if you can find it, do check it out. It's worth it for the quite terrible production qualities at times, but it's got a cracking theme tune as well. So check him out. Jason King, played by Peter Wingard. Right, guys, that's all for today. Please remember to hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications of when those new videos are launched. Giving the video a thumbs up like really does help the channel grow and share this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.